Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf of Akama Yud Days. We are right in the midst of a sugya regarding the status of a slave. An Evet Kanani, a non-Jewish slave, is he considered metaltalin or like karka? Is it just like any other one of your belongings or is it like part of your estate, like a piece of real estate? Um, we had some nafkaminas regarding collecting an Evet from Yisoyimim to be applied to their father's debt. Typically, you can only do that for Karka, which had belonged to the father, as opposed to Metatlin of Yisoyimim, which are not bound, not committed to their father's loan. Question, what about their Avadim? So, we had many Shitois which held that an Evid is equated to Karka. In this regard, Rabbi Nachman disagrees, and here's his proof. Says the Gemara, Ten lines off the top of the Amit. The Tani Avimi. Avimi presented a price, which will indicate to us that in fact an Eved is simply like any other of your metatlan, any other one of your belongings. Prusbal. So we know Prusbal is that document which a lender will uh, write, will have written for him. Come um, Shmita, in order to avoid you know, losing collection rights to his debt so he sort of transfers the debt to the Bezdin who can collect on his behalf, right? So there's a law that proves bol chal ala karka. You need to have karka, the borrower, the loiva, who's going to be involved in this whole proves bol. He must be in possession. He has to own some karka. So you need to have actual karka. The fact that he owns an evad does not suffice. Now, why is this necessary? So, actually, Rashi and Gittin explains one reason. Because that's typical. A person will typically only lend, the bank will only lend the person large amounts when there's something to back up that loan. So, a loan is typically uh, tied up with karka. Otherwise, it's not a common thing that a person will lend money without that, you know, security of the karka backup, so it's called the milsa de lishchicha, it's not a common occurrence, for which chachamin do not make takanis. That's, you know, that's the way it goes. Chacham only make takanis for common situations. So that's why ownership of karka is a prerequisite to the prusbol process. Rashi over here in, in Baba Kama gives another reason. He says we, when the leva is in possession of karka, then it's as though the debt is sort of semi-collected because the, the bank, the Baal Chayv, can go straight to the Karka, it's secure, it's right there, it's an easy fallback. So it looks less, it, it lessens the impression. Perception-wise, it looks like it's already sort of his. He's already in possession. It looks less as though he's actually going to collect. So it, it, it minimizes that appearance, that perception that he's actually going to collect his loan, uh, you know, after Shemitah. So the Chacham sort of crafted their takana in a manner w which minimizes any perception of wrongdoing. So bottom line is karka is needed and avadim do not qualify as karka. Okay, pretty clear halacha. That uh, indicates that an evid is not like karka. Furthermore, says the Bryce, metatla niknin ima karka. We know that you can be kind of using kinyan agav. You can bundle together items with karka. So when you make the kidney on the karka, you sort of get it all together as one. So you can pair up metatlin with real karka, in which case when you make the kidney on the karka, the metatlin come along for the ride. Ve'enon niknin imavadim. It doesn't work with slaves. So if you kind of the evid, you cannot bundle av uh, avadim with metatlin. The kidney on the evid does not apply to the metatlin. So clearly this brysa does not regard an evid like karka. And that's Rav Nachman's source. Well, says the Gemara Leimah Ketanoi, perhaps this question of how to treat, how to label an Eved, is a Machlech Ketanoi. One Brisa says, Machar le Avodim Karkois. Ruben sold Shimon, Avodim and Karkois. Hechzik ba'avodim, like on Karkois. So the Chazak on the Eved, the Kinyan on the Eved does not work for the Karkois. You have to make a separate Kinyan for the Karka. Because this Brisa clearly holds, an Eved is not like Karka. 
So it's just like any other item, in which case Kinyan Agav on that item cannot help you for another item. The Karko is like on Avodim. If he makes a Kinyan on Karka, you don't get the Evid along with it. Now the question is really why? Because if we're going that an Evid is Metatlan, you can. You can be kind of Metatlan Agav Karka. So Rashi addresses this question. He says later the Gemara will discuss it and explain, well, even though an Evid is regarded like Metatlan according to this Brisa, but he's different than a regular, you know, stationary item which just sits in its place. Doesn't have a mind, mind of its own, right? And Evid has a mind of its own. So, in this case, he can't just, you know, be bundled together with the character. We'll see later in the Gemara. Okay, so that's the first part of the Brysa. First part of Brysa number one. Brysa continues. What if you bundle together Karkois and Metatlan? Okay, I want to buy a piece of land and a car. Karkois and Metatlan, then it works. Kinyanagav works. Hechzik B'Karka Kana Metatlan. The Kinyan and the Karka is applied to the Metatlan as well. Metatlan, like on a karka, but if I'm kind of the car in the driveway, I'm not kind of, not kind of the house because Kininagav is Metatlan on account of karka, not the other way around. Part three of the Bryce. Avadam and Metatlan. Let's say I bundle together. I want to buy an Evid and Metatlan. Since the Evid is not karka, he's regarded like just like any other Metatlan, so Kininagav does not work at all. Hechzik ba'avadam lekana Metatlan. Metatlan lekana Avadam. So clearly this Bryce, let's call it Bryce number one, maintains an Evid is treated like any other item that you own. And that's Rav Nachman's right. And that's one opinion. Vatanya. That's Rav Nachman had another had a right from the Bryce before. Now we, we're trying to sort of present a machlekas tanoim on this, on this topic, on this subject. Bryce number one seems to hold an Evid is equated to Metalthlin. Vatanya. Well, listen to Bryce number two, which says the other way around. Seems to hold that an Evid is like Karaka. You can make it Kinyan Agav with Avodim as well. Hechzik ba'avodim kona metatlan. By being kind of the Evid, you can also be kind of metatlan. Ma'ila ba'kamithli. So it appears that the Machlekes revolves around this question of how to treat Avodim. The Mara Savar Avodim ki makarki dummy. Bryce number two. Considers an Evid like Karaka. Umar Savar, Avadim ki metatlan dummy. Whereas Bryce number one seems to hold an evidence like metatlan. Is that so? Amar Rav Ika Breder of Ami. No. Not so quick. The Kuliyama, Avadim ki makarki dummy. Perhaps both Bryce's hold. An evidence like Kark. Let's go through Bryce by Bryce. So about the Tanya Kono. So Bryce number two, which says. That you can be kind of metatlan on account of the evid shaper that works perfectly, and evid is like karka which allows for kinyanaka. But the tani loy kana, what a bright price number one. Who doesn't allow you to be kind of metatlan agav karka? We thought because evid is like metatlan. No, evid is like karka. But the tani loy kana. You know why? Because also because although in certain regards the evid is like karka, but it's not really a piece of real estate. And for Kinyan Agav, we require a karka which stays in its place, which is stationary, not going anywhere. But in on karka, like those fortified cities in Yehuda, which provide us with the, the source. That's what we learn, the Allah of Kinyan Agav. Not moving anywhere. So you need that type of karka for Kinyan Agav. So when it comes to other Allah, it's perhaps an evidence like karka. Except for Kinyan Agav. This none, as we find in the Mishnah, Nechosim She'en Lamachrais, which is a reference to commodities and merchandise and belongings which are not really safely secured. You can take them and run with them, so the bank will not sort of you know, lend on their account. That's why it's called Eilam Achrais. Just a term, a reference to Metatlan. Niknim Im Nechosim She'en Lamachrais. So you can purchase a car together with a piece of real estate in one Kinyan, Bekesev, Mishtar Bechazoka, by making any one of these three forms of acquisition on the karka, and the car comes along with it. But not, I mean, how do we know this is true? Where do we find this concept of Kinyan Agav bundling things together? Amarchiske, the Makrove, a Pasuk, in the Brayyamin, regarding Yeshafat. Ha'itan la Mavim, their father Yeshafat gave them a gift, Matanis Rabbis, Lekesev, Alazov, McDonald's, food, drink, gold, silver. 
Im Ari Mitzuras be together with the fortified cities in Yehuda. So we find Kinyan Agav relates to fortified cities, stationary entities, which is a precondition for Kinyan Agav as opposed to an Evid. So according to this approach, all hold Avadam Akarka, but since it's a, uh, a moving Karka, it doesn't allow for Kinyan Agav. That's the opinion of the first price. Igadami, here comes track two. There's another version of Amar of Ikebre Darvidi. The Kuli Alma, Avdi, Kimetalton Dami. Both prices, number one and number two, hold. And Ever is like Metal. I want to explain, we'll explain both prices in this light. The Tani Loikana, Shopper. So, price number one, which says that you cannot be kind of Metalton Agav the Ever. That's perfect because an Ever is like Metalton. Had the Sani Kana. What about the second price, which allows for Metalton to come along with the Ever? And Ebed is, is, uh, is not karakas. How does it work? The answer is ba'id and alav. We're speaking that the item is sitting on the Ebed. The ring is on his finger. Forget Agav. We're not working with Kinyan Agav. Rather, he's going to be kind of the ring because of Kinyan Chatzar. Like you can be kind of an item which is put into your backyard. You can do that. So since he's being kind of the Ebed, the Ebed becomes like his Chatzar. And anything situated on that Chatzar can be yours as well. What do you mean? How could the Evid be a chatzar? What good is it if the Adam is sitting on the Evid? It's a moving chatzar. A chatzar malach is like kana. A moving chatzar is worth nothing. Rashi says that's not a chatzar when it's moving. Perhaps he happens to be standing right now. He's still classified as an al chatzar because he has a potential to move around. Rabbi tells us, Kol she'ilu mahalach le'kan, anything which, if it was wor- walking, it wouldn't constitute a k'chatzer. Oymed v'yashiv le'kan, likewise, even if it's standing or sitting in place, it's in a stationary state, it still doesn't work. So how does the uh, Evid going to be kind of the ring on his finger? Velchaz of a kafet. So must be speaking that he's tied up. He's restrained. He physically can't move. So now, he constitutes a k'chatzer. Okay, so according to this, Approach both prices subscribe to the concept of Evid Kimatatlan. The reason why in Bryson number two we can be kind of metatlan with the Evid is not because of Kinyanagav, that's exclusive to Karka. Rather, we it's because of Chatzar because he's tied up. Now, actually, there was another part of the Bryce which we have yet to quote. But Tanya, what about in that second Bryce that continues and says, If you want to pair up Avadam with Karka, you can do that. You can be Machzikam Karka and get the Ever along with it. Problem is, in the first Brysa, it clearly indicated otherwise. That if you Machzik in a Karka, you don't get the Ever. How do we explain that? Hasan Ba'idim Besech. Brysa number two, which allows for it, is speaking where the Ever is sitting on the Karka. That's why it's different. We're going to explain soon why. As opposed to Brysa number one, where the Ever was not situated on the Karka. So as we go, Machlal da Haid Loikana. Apparently, Bryce number one, which does not allow for the Evid to come along with the Karka in the same Kinyan, because she ain't the Undimusaycha. We're speaking that the Evid is not situated on the Karka. Right? That explains the difference. So, preliminarily, we understand a bit of a difference here, but if we look into, into it a bit deeper, we, we don't quite understand why would that be the uh, criterion. So now, Honi Chalach Lishna the Amar. Remember, we had two tracks. So, according to the, the track, which, had, which, which was the Amar of Ika Bredav Ami, that both prices hold Avdi ki metatlin dummy. Evid is like metatlin. So that would explain, you know, why the Evid has to sit on the karka. I knew the Yomdim Besecha in Eloi Eloi. That explains that, you know, the case where the Evid is on the karka, as in Bryson number two, that's why it works. Whereas in Bryson number one, it's not on the karka, it doesn't work. Elolach Nishan the Amar Avdi ki metatlin dummy. But according to the first track in the Gemara, that both prices of the are of the opinion that an evidence like karka, kimakarki dummy. So why would location make any difference? Why would we require the evidence who's considered like a, just a piece of real estate to be sitting on the other piece of real estate in order for it to be bundled together? That's not a requirement. Amar Shmuel Shmuel tells us, you know, if you buy ten properties at once, you can make a kinin on one and supply to all of them. Machalei eser sades, eser medias. He sold in ten fields, situated in ten different locations. Once he's kind of one, he's kind of all. Says the one second. According to you, 
Damar, Avdikim Metal and Dami. So according to the first approach, that all subscribe to the concept that Ever is Metalfan. And the way you explain the Machlekas of the Bryces is that when the Bryces says the Eved comes along with the Karka, with the same Kinim, that's because the Eved was sitting on the Karka, so he comes along with him. The other Bryces which says it doesn't come along, it's because it's not on the Karka. Well, why would you ever need the Eved to be sitting on the Karka for Kinim Agav? Why would you need a car sitting on, on the driveway? That's not a requirement for Agav. We have a halacha discussed back in Kedusha. We don't need the item to be sitting on the karka for Agav to take effect. So, either way, we're not quite understanding what's going on. Why is position, why is location a precondition? Whether you hold that evidence metalton, why is that needed? Whether you hold evidence karka, why is that needed? Elamai is Oh, so you must say, Shani metalton, the nighty, an evidence who's a, a moving item who has a mind of his own, is very different. Very different than a passive item. Over there, it can be anywhere. For it to be, come, for it to be bundled together in the same package deal. But an Ever who has a mind of his own, he's got to be right here to be bundled together. Hachanami. Likewise, even if an Ever is regarded like Karka, we can still understand why position, uh, positioning him on the actual Karka, is a precondition for Kenyan Aga. Shani Mekaki de Naiti. Mekaki de Naiti. It's very different. When the Karka is a passive, you know, immobile piece of property. <laughs> That's not going anywhere. So there Shmuel says, yeah, if you make a kinyan on one, it's sort of all connected, it works for the whole thing. But when it's makarki the ninety, when it's something which is, yeah, it's regarded like real estate, and ever technically it's regarded like karka, but it's, he's moving around. He's very different than makarki the ninety, and something that's not moving around. Out of makarki the ninety, and ever it's called ninety. Ninety. So in order for it to be paired together, right, the luck is you can make a kinyan on one karka, and kind of the other karka. It has to be sitting on the karka, sort of connect to it. Otherwise, it's not a pair. How oh, Samba, in Shmuel's case, when he's purchasing 10 fields, which are, you know, passive entities, how oh, some sadna, the invul, the, um, you know, the, the glob, the arachado, it's one piece of land. It's all connected to the same earth. So therefore, the kinyan on one works for the others. Okay, bottom line is like this. Question. What is the status of an Evid Kanani? Is he like any other of your metaltalin? Or is it considered like karka? We had two brises which we thought revolved around this question, but we concluded that perhaps both hold evidence like metaltalin, and we explain both prices, or perhaps like karka, and we still understand both prices as well. Because they reflect different circumstances, different locations, different positions. And the Mishnah mentioned, Nechosim she'en ba'milah. In order for a person to be liable for damages, he has to have damaged assets which are aimed by me'ilah, which don't have the concept, the potential for me'ilah, which is typically something that refers to hegdish property, for which if a person, you know, uh, misuses or diverts, he's liable uh, for me'ilah. He has to pay the uh, the keren, the chaymesh, the carbon, right? So the, the pasuk says the only time. A person is liable for his animal's damages. Only his friends, his comrade, his contemporaries, animal. But if it's the Hegdish's animal that was damaged, you're potter. Now, the Mishnah, rather than just saying simply it has to be a non-Hegdish entity, it has to be privately owned for the Hezek liability to take effect, the Mishnah chooses an interesting lotion. Ain't by Mila. There's no Mila, which sounds like, although it is Hegdish, you're Chayev for being Mazak that item, as long as there's no Mila. Mila would the less. Hamigdash Kachi, but it's still Kaddish. So why would you be Chayev? Why is that called Sheir Rei Eyu? Man Tana. So who's the Tana? Who's the author of this Mishnah? That considers you 
liable for hezek. Even if you're a mazik, your friend's carbon. Because certain, certain carbonists, which have a lesser kedusha, like, like shlomim, which is a kachim kalim, a lighter kedusha, is kaddish, but it has no meal during its lifetime. And the Mishnah seems to indicate in that case you're chai if you damage it. Who's that shita that considers that item to be private property? And compliant with the term of Shay Reyu. Mantan Omar Byechnan, Bikachim Kalim. Fali with the Rabbi Sagli. Shabi Sagli the Shita that holds that Kachim Kalim is considered privately owned. Even though it's a carbon, the Omar Mamma Bailamu, he says it's it's considered one of your possessions. You're responsible for it, it's your thing. And therefore it's called Shay Reyu. And if you're Mazak, somebody Mazak it is Chai. The Sanya. Right? So he says it's Mon Bailu, Bailu the Sanya, we have a Braisa. When a person denies ever, you know, taking an item for safekeeping, it's called Shvos Apikadan. Where's my item? Never had it. I swear. And then he comes and admits he has to pay the actual principal, the Chaymish, has to bring a carbon. And the Pasuk uses a Lash Nomala Mal Bashem, and then it says Vikichesh Bamisa. So he denies his friend's claim. But why the word Bashem? La Rabbi is Kachim Kalam Shem Amoinoi. The Pasuk here is including even denial of a Pekadon which happens to be a Kurban. And Rashi explains, the Kichesh, denial applies to the word behind it, Bashem, and the word before it, ahead of it, Amita. So it's a double denial, you're denying your friend's claim which involves, entails, a sort of holy item. So clearly, Kachim Kalam is regarded as personal... Uh, Personal possession. And likewise, now Mishnah. It's called Shayri and qualifies for Nizaka. But Tanama, we have a Mishnah, which seems to indicate otherwise. A Makadish Bechalkai. If one is Makadish and Isha with his portion of the carbon, Ben Bekachim Kachim, Ben Bekachim Kalam, and Makadash, you can't use a part of a carbon for Kiddush. Apparently, it's not privately owned. Lema, Deloy, Kravis Aglili, do you mean to say this is not consistent with Rabbi Aglili? Who says, when it comes to Kachim, Kachim Kachim, not. That's, you know, heavenly owned. But Kachim Kalim is, has an element of private ownership. So it should qualify for Kedushin as well. It's your uh, prop. I feel the Rabbi Yisak Lili. That Mishnah can fit even Rabbi Yisi. Kiyam Rabbi Yisak Lili. When does he say it's considered Mom and Baal and Mechaim during the lifetime of the Kerb and Avalach HaShchita? But once the Shchita took place, the Hakrabba process was initiated. Everybody agrees it's no longer privately owned. It goes to Hashem. I feel the Rabbi Yisak Lili Maida. The Kikazaho, anybody who's now going to get a portion of the carbon, whether it's the Kayan getting his portion, or even the owner getting some of his carbon, Mishulchan Gavay Kazacho, eating off Hashem's table, it's from the Mizbeach, it's no longer privately owned. Or Machayim Yomer? But during the lifetime of the carbon, it's considered privately owned? But we have a mission, Bukhair, firstborn kosher animal, which is meant to be brought as a carbon if it has no blemish. Marchanoi say the Kayan could sell him, can't redeem him, he can sell him to the next Kayan and let him look after it. Tam Chai, if he's an unblemished carbon. You can sell him while he's alive. Rashi explained because if he had died, then he's Asr Bahna because he's like a carbon that died. So, but during its lifetime, you can sell it. Uba Mum, Chayv Shachat. If you got a blemish, then it could just be, you know, Shechted anywhere. It's no longer required to be brought as a carbon. So, you can sell him whether he's alive or Shachat. And in fact, you can use a Bukhar for Kedusha Isha. It's considered your private possession. You meant to know one thing here. This, that we consider a Bechur to be, you know, sort of partially privately owned. It's only nowadays we have no Beis Hamidash. There's no potential for Hakrav of that Bechur. The Kivan, the Lechaz, the Hakrav, it's not suitable for a Karban. Regarded as the Kain's possession. When the Beis Hamidash was around, the Chaz, the Hakrav, that this Bechur was meant for Karban, it's not privately owned anymore. When a Rav came and asked Rav Nachman a question, what do you mean? We had that price, so the any kachim column is considered privately owned. Umala mal bashem. So denying a pekatim regarding a carbon is considered denying personal property, personal claim. The rabbi's kachim column shame no mind. The rabbi said, basically regards kachim column like privately owned. And you know the Gemara later brings that this is a pasuk by this price refers to bechur as well. How could Rav Nachman, how could you say Bukhar is not privately owned? Um, and, and by the way, very important to, to point out, this halacha, 
Umala Mal Bashem, which triggers the whole Shuas HaPikadim process, which ultimately brings a person to a Karban Hashem, is clearly speaking about when they had a base of And still we see it's considered private property. And Takashi Rav Nachman, who says, no, 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 when there's potential for a crop, it's not private property. Umishani Rav Vina came and he answered. Typically, if he's uh, slated for Akrova, it's not privately owned. So why is it different? Why over here? Is it considered privately owned? Oh. Although it's a Bechar, but it's originating from outside of Yisrael. I'll leave with Reb Shimon. We'll follow Reb Shimon. The Amar in Bo Tzmimim Yikarvu. Any Bechar out of Eretz Yisrael is not meant to be brought to the base of me. Rashi Tesis brings it. So we connect it to Meiser. Maser is not meant to be brought from outside of Yisrael. So if it, if it's here, if it's delivered to the base of Middash, unblemished, okay, you carve it, you bring it as a carbon. In Bo, in, yeah, if it's here, okay. L'chadchila, l'chadchila, preferably you don't bring it. So not really, it's not really slated for Akrava. And therefore, um, it reverts to a regular Kachim Kalim, and it's not consi- it's considered privately owned. Okay, so that was sort of the dialogue back and forth. Rav Nachman, Rava, Ravina, good. Question is like this. Vimisa, if it indeed it's true and correct. If Rabbi Yechon told us, right at the beginning of the, this segment of the Gemara, Rabbi Yechon told us, the Chiyamar is a glilim a mina hu mechayim. That any kachim kalim, during the lifetime of the carbon, Rabbi Yechon considers it your mommy, just like by Shwasa Pekad, and it's considered privately owned. Likewise, by the din of Vavakama of Mazik, it's called Shei Re'eu. So then, wh- why was Ravina sort of, you know, stuck and he had to uh, come up with this new concept of Bechur from Chutz Lord's? Give a very simple answer to the question. What was the question? From Nachman says, um, guess what? Uh, a Bechur which is meant for Akrava is not privately owned. But then we have the Braisa, who basically tells us, Kachim Kalm is privately owned. So guess what? Just say it's Tushita, it's Dishani, he should answer. Horabi Saklili, Horabhanan. Rab Nachman is going with Shitas Rabbanan. He holds that a carbon which is meant for Akrava is not privately owned. Whereas the the other Bryce, which indicates that it is considered privately owned, is Rabbi Saklili. Very simple. Says the Gemara, you know what? You're right. When it comes to other, like a shlamim, other kachim kalim, certainly Rabbi Saglida maintains that these are considered privately owned. Regarding Mikadash and Isha, regarding Shvos um, Apikadim, regarding Dine Nazikin. So why can't we just answer simply that it's Rabbi Saglida speaking? Because we were speaking about a Bechur. Bechur is totally different. Matna is kuna So we're speaking about a bechor, which is a gift to the kain, right? The only gives it to the kain. That's a totally different shani. It's a totally different category. Matna is kuna ka'amis. Shani matna is kuna. They're very different. The kikos zochu, when a kain is zoicha, it's not a gift directly from the farmer to the kain. It's from Hashem. It's vaya Hashem mishulchan gavay kazochu. It's like you're first giving the gift to Hashem, and then the kain gets it from Hashem. So now when the coin gets it, it's off Hashem's table. It's not privately owned. If in fact, this uh, Bechur has potential for Akrova. Even Rabbi Saglida would agree to that. And therefore we have to say, we're compelled to say, that the Bechur, up for discussion here, is a Bechur which has no potential. The of Akrova, it's coming from Chutz Laretz, etc. So there we say, it is considered a privately owned item. Okay, so bottom line is, When the mission says a person is liable for damaging, what does that mean? It's hegdish. Why is it called shariyeyo? Says Rabbi Yechon, we have Rabbi Siaglili, Kachim Kalam is considered privately owned. Regarding Mazik, regarding Shvosa Pikada, regarding Mikadash Nisha, etc. But we have three conditions. First of all, only Kachim Kalam, not Kachim Kachim. Number two has to be during the lifetime of the car, but not once it's initiated the Hakrava process. And number three, when it comes to matanis kuna like a bechor, 
It's only considered privately owned if there's no potential for Akram. Okay, that's somewhere like this Gemara. And then we had a discussion before about status of an Evet, whether it has a Demon Karka, Matatlan, Machlekes Amarayim, perhaps even Machlekes Tanayim. All the best to you in Hatzlach Rabbah.